Hi, my name is Abrar Saeed, and I've been uh, working as an Oracle DBA since 2008 with Gallup. I'm working for Gallup right now since 2011. Uh, last year, I got a chance to work on a project which was EBS upgrade 1213 to 1225. This is not an easy process because the upgrade takes a lot of time and you need a lot of knowledge to do that. I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks today as of how you can go through the upgrade process. My first set of tip is how to prepare for the upgrade. So you have a few checks which you need to do, which is operating system patches, database level checks, and underscore parameters. You want to make sure you do, do that right. There is a utility called ETCC. You can go to Oracle website and download ETCC and run that across your, against your database. In that way, you can get a list of patches and you don't have to go through the whole documentation looking for what patch you need to apply. The second tip I'm going to give you today is make sure you run the build stage.sh correctly because in Oracle EBS 12.2, you need to run build stage.sh, not unzip the files. There's another parameter and there's another check called MD5 sum check. So you need to run that as well to make sure your software is intact. The next step I'm going to give you is for you to create a guaranteed restore point on the database. In that way, you can ensure if anything fails, you can get back to that restore point. Also, same time in parallel, just make sure you copy your FS1, FS2, and FSNE. In that way, you have a restore point on the database and the application, and you can go back to wherever you want, and you don't have to redo the whole thing again. The next step I'm going to give you today is make sure you create a backup of FND nodes, FND OEM context files, and also have a backup of invalid objects every single time you apply a patch. Uh, another great tip is you need to compare the invalid objects after you apply the second patch or the third patch with your previous patch. And if anything is invalid, make sure you go ahead and recompile them. So the next set of tips is after you've done your upgrade successfully. So to start off, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what ADOP is. So there are five phases in ADOP. There's prepare, apply, finalize, cutover, and cleanup. There's a special phase called ADOP phase equals FS clone. You want to make sure that you run the ADOF phase equals FS clone when you're starting the patching cycle for the first time or any other time. That saves you a lot of time during the whole patching cycle because ADOF phase equals prepare just copies the deltas and ADOP phase equals FS clone has already copied it before. So you want to start off with ADOP phase equals FS clone first. Second thing is cutover takes a very long time. So and the reason for that is your ICM, which is the internal concurrent manager, just hangs. So there is a command to do just to abort the internal concurrent manager, which is adcmctl.sh abort. So if your cutover is hanging for more than 10 or 15 minutes, you want to make sure that you run uh, ICM abort command. The next step I'm going to give you today is after you upgrade, you make sure you tune your Java heap size or your JVM. Sometimes what happens is with the default values of JVM and Java heap size, you will be able to have 100 or 150 users tops. So if you want to have more number of users, you make sure that your XMS and XMX value of the Java heap size is at least one or two gigs, depending on the number of users you have serving on your system. The next tip I'm going to give you today is about refresh. It's a little different when you're refreshing a 12.1.3 applications versus a 12.2.4 or 12.2.5 or 12.2.6 applications. As there are different file systems, which is FS1, FS2, and FSNE, when you're cloning the application from prod, prod or production, you might want to make sure that you use a term ADCFG clone dual FS. So what dual FS does is it basically clones your FS1 to FS2 and does, it all that, does all those things for you. Now, this dual FS command started in 12.2.4, so this is really helpful, and that's a very important thing to use that. And finally, um, leave yourself at least six months to a year for planning the upgrade, just to make sure that if you run into any issues, you have many number of iterations before you go live. And also, my last tip is practice, 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 and um, Thanks for watching my video and good luck with your upgrade.